Obviously, we're both very close friends with Jamie Jones Buchanan, um, co-host of the show and your best mate and best man. He were absolutely devastated in the semi-final because he knew in his heart of hearts when he went down on the pitch that that was the last game he was going to play with yourself. Um, what kind of journey have you two been on together? Yeah, well, I have to say that, uh, likewise, um, I was devastated as well. When, you know, when I looked back in the game and saw him on the floor, I knew. You know, I knew it was the last time we'd play together and I didn't know the extent of his injury at that stage, but I knew um, that it, it was the last time. Um, I went in after the game and gave him a big cuddle, uh, told him it were all going to be all right and um, he's still out there with us, yeah. although he's not, you know, although he's injured and, he, and he's clearly on the sidelines at the minute, um, he's out there with us and, and we, we started out, you know, going back. 20 years battling against each other with Lancashire and Yorkshire and, yeah. um, we had some real fun times playing against each other and I have to say my first impression of him was uh, that he was a complete wild card he was an absolute crackpot and then we both signed for Leeds and we played England schoolboys on the 16th together and, and um, from that, mo that moment we, we hit it off yeah. um, we got on so well so very very different um, but um, he's he's a great friend and and um, he's one of the players. Um, you know, I, I owe so much to, but his commitment um, has taught me so many things, and and he's certainly inspiring to everybody. Um, we bumped into Brian Redpath in uh, in the car park, and Jones mentioned that his last game when we played with Kevin. Don't worry, got a position at flanker for you, Jones. <laughs> lined up. <laughs> So, yeah, I think he could do a good job as a six or a seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do as well. Yeah. It'd be horrible, wouldn't it, jackaling yeah, it would around? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely awful. Everyone talks about your success, but I want to know, what's what's the hardest defeat to take you? You've won, you've won so much, but what were Kev Sinfield's hardest defeat in a lead shirt? And then, on the flip side, what was your most satisfying victory? Uh, I've, I've spoken about it quite a bit. Not necessarily being in, in the shirt, but being left out of the... The 2000 Challenge Cup final was horrible. Um, probably the first time I'd had, had to face real adversity in my career, and, and um, you know, when all your family and friends are going, it, was, it would have been the biggest occasion in my career to that date. Um, and to be left out was was horrendous. Um, but probably one of the best things that happened to me as well. In a in a lead shirt, um, it'd be one of the finals, um, without a doubt probably the last Wembley final in, in 2012 was the moment you know, I, I walked off the field and thought I don't know whether I, I want to go through this again I don't yeah. know whether I want to be here in a Wembley final and after first walking up those stairs and and afterwards after first going seeing my wife, my kids, my parents and, and knowing that I'd got another losers medal um, th that would that'd be the worst the big occasions are, are the worst you know thankfully because of the job we do and, and uh, perhaps some of the experiences I've been to, you, been through, you learn to deal with some of that disappointment and um, certainly winning at Wembley last year was, was one for perseverance given what we've been through as a group. Best victory would be uh, either the, the 04 Grand Final which was the first one yeah, yeah, in 32 yeah. years which was so special. Good set of lads as well. Yeah, great, great group, great team. Um, or the, the 2012 Grand Final when we were sort of even, avenging, although it wasn't a revenge mission, but looking back now, having tasted defeat in that 2012 Challenge Cup Final yeah. and faced the demons as if to say, do I want to do this again? But be able to come back, come through that playoff series like we did and, and win at Old Trafford against Warrington was brilliant. Now, there's a few players leaving, Kyle Lulawai, but the big story is yourself and JP, two huge players. You're both bowing out at the end of the season, but can you please describe Jamie Peacock? He's described you, but can you, for OBM, describe Jamie Peacock? Yeah, he's uh, he's the most inspirational bloke I've played alongside. Um, he's an absolute warrior. Um, if you saw the state of him on a on a Monday morning when we played on a Friday night, you'd ask yourself, how on earth would he be ready to play again on Friday? But he does, and every time he leads from the front. Um, he's a true inspiration both on and off the field and he's just he's just got the most out of his body and the most out of his career and, and um, you know I've, 
for someone like me who's tried to do something very similar, um, to see him do it and achieve it and, and be so good at it um, has been, and like I said, an, an inspiration. So um, his stats are ridiculous. Um, and, and what he's been able to do is, there's not many players that can do it, but over the course of his career, he's remodelled himself and he's always been the first to carry as hard as he can wanted to hit as hard as he can, wanted to work as hard as he can. But he's had to change positions and he's still able to get the best out of his body now at, at 36, 37. So, um, you know, I've total respect for him. And um, I have to say he's, he's probably the greatest sign. In fact, he is the greatest sign the club's ever made. We're paying the town blue and amber to support the lads all the way to Wembley. I'm Mick Burke, welcome to the Buffers. <laughs> It's a Rhinos special, Rhinos at Wembley, and we're here with the main man, last year's Lance Todd winner, Ryan O. Make some noise for Ryan O. Holy, it's great to be here. This is virtually my local down at the Buffers. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is used to this though, the Leeds fans are always supportive, aren't they? Oh yeah, definitely. It's like it's just like having it south standing, you know, right here on my doorstep here, it's quality. Um like when we run out, you know, at Edinley in front of the South Stand, it's brilliant and like we just get the same reception, you know, anywhere we go. And imagine it'll be the same down in Wembley uh, this weekend. Who's going to Wembley? Yeah! Yeah! We're going there to we Wembley. Go. Right, um, it's gonna be better. It's gonna be better <laughs> this year. Uh, so last year you got Lance Todd trophy. Yeah. Fantastic display against Cass. Are you hoping for more of the same? What did it mean to you to get Get that, that trophy, it's, it's an absolutely legendary uh, accolade. Yeah, it goes back a, a fair few years and um, I got introduced into a bit of a club, you know, like yeah. they have um, an awards dinner for it and it's brilliant to be part of that select group of players, you know, elite group of players who have won that trophy and like for my name to be on that trophy, you know, they, that's amazing and I'll never forget that. Not many people have won it twice, but there's only one who's won it three times. Do you know you're one of five Leeds players to ever win it? Do you know who those players are? I do, yeah. We, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to be the same stage, but um, yeah, I had a chat with um, Gary Evington the other day about it. You know, I'm going back uh, this year to do um, the handover process at the um, at the awards. Well, if I don't win it again, but you'll win it again. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he was telling me he listed belt names who, who won it, and there's me, there's Gary yep. Connolly, there's Kev, uh, Kev Simfield, uh, Lee Ryan Levet, and uh, Steve Pitchford, and uh, that's them all. Well, we've been out to see Steve Pitchford. Top bloke, and it's, uh, it's great that those legends like Roy Dickinson, last team to go back to back was 77 78, and you guys could emulate that. Uh, we could, yeah, and like st uh, people in this area still remember them, them days in 77 78, and um, I want to be um, like remembered as a team through that area, you know, who can win it twice. And um, I think we've got a great opportunity this, this weekend, um, the way that we have been playing and the way the team's been going. So um, we need all the fans down there to do their normal job and carry us through. So it's a big year last year, and it's going to be an even bigger year next year because you're expecting your second child. Congratulations! Yeah. Excited, mate. Um, I am really excited. I think I'm a bit more, um, a little bit crazy. I have to do get two because one, <laughs> one's hard enough. But um, yeah, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, um, I'm a bit of a family man already. You know, pretty much already. So I sh it should suit me. Now I want you to tell all the fans. Obviously, we all know what it means to you guys. But some fans um and are in. There's still a few days. Still some tickets left. Why should the fans get on a bus and come down to Wembley? Well, um, I'm sure you've all uh, spoke to someone who, who's been down last year and you can tell like uh, when you go down there and we'll win, it's a great, great, uh, great day out for all you lot. And uh, we need all the support we can get. Um, you know, like when we turned around last year, I'm talking about when, when we won it, it was great to see all the side uh, filled with, you know, blue and amber. And we need that again this year. Get down and support the boys. Yeah. 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 Right. Lastly, last question from me. Now, you've been part of a fantastic golden generation. It's coming to a bit of an end of the year. JP and Kev, last run night at Wembley. What kind of impact have them two players had on your career? Oh, they've been massive. I think, um, well, the first day of my uh, senior pre-season, uh, Kev was there. Uh, he hadn't been picked for Great Britain or England uh, that year, and, and uh, he was there. He was with the young, young lads training. 
And um, so basically from day one he's been there leading me in the right direction. I think um, he's not steered me far wrong because um, you know, we've achieved what we've achieved. And uh, I don't want it to come to the end of an era like you've, you've, you've put a bit of a block on it there. He says it's stopped now, but hopefully not. Hopefully it'll uh, continue after the older boys have gone. It will continue because there's some great young talent. It's a great culture at Leeds and we're seeing like Sebastian Golden, Owen Mulhern, Stevie Ward coming to the fall this year. How excited about the future players? We had Jordan Lilly on the show this morning. Yeah. Well, it's brilliant. That's that's how you know the majority of Leeds players start. You know, coming through as young kids, John Z and like Kev themselves have all come through, and you can I can name millions of them. But um, that's what we need. To, you know, for them the youngsters to come through, and it's um, that's you know, the heart and soul of the club. That's why you know we've done so well the last uh, recent years. Mate, good luck this weekend. Cheers, Let's you. win it again. Thanks. Make some noise. <laughs> I'm here with the landlord, Mick Burke. I've known you for a while from uh, coaching Chris, your son, Stan right, Stanley. Yeah. You're at North East End of Leeds now, and you've got quite a following here. This is an awesome shrine for Leeds Rhinos, isn't it? How long have you been here? Uh, we've been in the club about three and a half years, but uh, rugby league's been passing. Right. 50 years, I've been a Leeds fan, a Rhino fan, and you can tell by the look of the walls. This is my ear and my ears and everything is dedicated to you lads, you know. Most people have like uh, an old deer's head on the wall. Uh, somehow you've managed to get a real Ronnie Rhino. How on earth have you come across that? Well, it's uh, not what you know. It's a wee know. People just throw it at me one night and says, I think you'll appreciate that in the pub. And it goes fit with everything else, you know. Certainly will. It's a lot better than normal stag's head. Do you usually dress the pub up as well as you have done outside? Because it's stellar as outside as well. It's outstanding. Yeah, well, we've been to a lot of functions with rhinos and me being cheeky, I ask for things and I get given things and I think it's a fitting thing for you lads, but, you know, if I can promote you as much as I can, I will do. Absolutely, it's special that we're dressing up the City Blue and Amber this week to follow the lads, to support the boys. Have you got a trip going from here for Buffy? Yeah, we've got a trip for Wembley, all lads are in, and we get back, we've already planned our uh, celebration doing something. We've got, had a bit of a practice run last year. What was it like coming back, having obviously won the, the match? Oh, it was awesome. The village was in uproar. Everything, everybody was smiling. That's the thing about rugby league. It makes families smile. It makes people smile. Pe people book their values and uh, what they're going to do week in, week out about supporting the rhinos, about getting behind the lads. And, and it's a tribute to what you lads do for us that we support you lads. Well, I've been fortunate to play in a few finals, only won one, but you'll have experienced quite a lot and we've interviewed a few Lansdowne Trophy winners as well. And I'm just wondering, over your time as a supporter, which final do you really cherish? Which one stands out in your heart? So you've got 77, uh, you've got 99 Leroy Rivet, Ryan Hall from last year, 2014, Stevie Pitchard from 77. Any of those games stick out in your mind? Yeah, uh, Leroy. Leroy Rivet? Le Leroy was outstanding. He was good, wasn't he? It, it, it wasn't just the tries he scored, it was his run-ups, his possession with ball. It was just a one-off game and it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And no disrespect to Ryan, but <laughs> it takes some beating. And we're not far from roundabout that he wrote his Ferrari off either, are we, yeah, mate? No, we're not. No. <laughs> it's a up, up in more. We had a chat with him about that. We got a uh, Lansdowne Trophy winner from last year. Who would you put your money on winning it this year? Who do you think is going to stand out in this year? Well, I think Ryan could do it double. You reckon? I do, yeah. Like we're, we're said, backing Ryan for double, yeah. There's not many that's done it. If it won't Ryan, who else anymore? Um, Watkins. Watkins, Callum Watkins. We've actually had exactly the same prediction down at G's Bar. That's outstanding. Thanks for inviting us up. It's been great to see how well you've decked out your pub and all the support that you've got here. It's uh, really humbling. Cheers, Mick. Jamie, it's done you a lot of years. Yeah. All the best. Thank you very much. I hope you get it better. I'll be back for next year's final. Thank you. Woo! <laughs>